want you to hit me as hard as you can. You know the old saying that there are no more original ideas? That famous Mark Twain quote has never been more relevant than with the film John Carter. In 2012, Disney finally brought to screen Edgar Rice Burroughs' classic science fiction hero a century after the books were initially published. With cutting-edge special effects, a vast mythology, and an incredibly talented director, John Carter should have been the next huge franchise and an easy win for Disney. But in a rare misstep, the House of Mouse bungled their marketing campaign and stumbled to a huge box office failure. But John Carter is a film that demands to be revisited and remains one of the best fantasy films to hit theaters since the original Star Wars in 1977. I'm Alex Mady, and welcome to The Unpopular Opinion. With a total production and marketing price tag of $350 million, John Carter was behind the eight ball from the very beginning. One of the most expensive films ever made, John Carter grossed only $73 million in North America and $211 million around the rest of the world. With the mightiest advertising geniuses on their payroll, ready to turn the Avengers into the biggest film of the year, how could John Carter have failed so badly? Couple that with a review embargo that lifted just a week before the movie hit theaters, fans were left with a critical split on both Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic. When you don't have industry folks clamoring to tell you a movie is a must-see, audiences have to rely solely on posters and trailers to convince them to see a movie, and that is where Disney shit the bed, big time. Based on Burroughs' Barsoom series, the main story that inspired John Carter is titled A Princess of Mars. Through production, the movie went by John Carter of Mars, but Disney suit figured they couldn't lure male viewers to a movie with Princess in the title and that the general public would be turned off by a film with Mars in the name. So, we are instead left with a movie simply named after the main character, a character whom most modern audiences are not familiar with and who shares a name with another guy played by Noah Wiley on NBC's medical series ER. Was this the big screen version of that doctor drama? A late attempt was made to show potential audiences how John Carter's source material inspired both Star Wars and Avatar, amongst dozens of other films, but that backfired as well. So, with so much going against it, John Carter never really had a chance. But when you watch the film, from the moment it begins, you are transported into a world unlike any you have ever seen. From the character design to the special effects, John Carter rivals the originality of Star Wars and the attention to detail of The Lord of the Rings. With 10 novels of material, John Carter should have resulted in multiple sequels that we will never get to see. But the film we do have has so much going for it, as long as you are willing to suspend your disbelief for a couple of hours. Like Middle Earth, Tatooine, Coruscant, and other fictional worlds, the Martian cities of Zadanga and Helium should be a part of our pop culture references. Nowhere in John Carter do the effects waver or fail for even a split second, fully immersing the viewer into this alien world. From an acting perspective, we have excellent supporting performances from Siren Hines, Dominic West, Mark Strong, and Brian Cranston amongst many, but there are three roles here that stand above the rest. While he's shown his depth since, at the time John Carter hit theaters, Lead actor Taylor Kitsch was best known for Friday Night Lights and a lackluster take on Gambit in X-Men Origins Wolverine. But as John Carter, I fully bought into his blend of Luke Skywalker and Han Solo. He balances that duty of being the chosen hero right alongside the swarthy brigand looking for fortune and glory. He is a movie hero of the highest caliber. You can see the influence this character had on the creation of the Star Wars characters, as well as Jake Sully in Avatar and Indiana Jones himself. I would gladly rank him up there as the type of classic film hero for kids to idolize. He stands up for himself, those less fortunate than him, and the woman he loves. That woman is played by Lynn Collins as Princess Dejah Thoris. Another X-Men Origins Wolverine alum, Collins is a striking and gorgeous cross between Princess Leia and Neytiri. She is smart, capable in battle, and did I mention unbelievably hot? I began having a huge crush on Collins after seeing this movie, and can only imagine what my junior high school self would have thought of her had this movie been released during my formative years. Her banter with John Carter is a highlight of the movie, and the chemistry between Collins and Kitsch is palpable. 
Collins represents a discovery that should have continued her career as a lead in films to come. Lastly, we have Willem Dafoe, who plays Tars Tarkas, leader of the Thark race. Having worked with director Andrew Stanton on Finding Nemo, Stanton must have known that Dafoe's iconic voice would have worked perfectly for the fully CGI alien, and he was right. The Tharks feel as real on screen as the Navi did in Avatar or Gollum in Lord of the Rings. After their first introduction, I stopped thinking of them as cartoons, but rather real actors on the screen. This is a testament to the technology used in the movie and the direction of Stanton. After years of working at Pixar, Stanton has become a master of knowing the best way to use computer realizations on the big screen. John Carter will be looked at as one of the most underappreciated uses of CGI of all time. Andrew Stanton, who returned to animated work after this foray into live-action filmmaking, shows that he is a worthy franchise filmmaker who can handle a massive-scale project like this. Had it not been for the weak campaign the movie had received, I am convinced Stanton would have had his name on a Star Wars film by this point. In fact, if anyone at Disney is watching this, please give Stanton another live-action project. His eye for blending computer-generated imagery with physical actors keeps John Carter feeling tangible and realistic the entire way through. Stanton brought some Pixar talent with him for John Carter, including composer Michael Giacchino. While Giacchino has since shown his musical abilities, John Carter was his first score that showed he was capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the legendary John Williams. The music here is sweeping, memorable, and everything pulls you deeper into the narrative. You will also find yourself humming these tunes long after the film has ended. So where are the problems in John Carter? You could point to the derivative nature of the story, despite it being written decades before the films that it inspired. So much of Star Wars, Avatar, and even Indiana Jones can be seen in John Carter, which George Lucas, James Cameron, and Steven Spielberg cite as their own inspiration. The pulpy serials like Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers that gave rise to a generation of blockbuster entertainment all stemmed from John Carter. So when you see a movie whose arena scene looks very similar to the fight and attack of the clones, you may have that been there, done that feeling. Even years of Tarzan movies, a character also created by Edgar Rice Burroughs, feels like it has driven the loincloth wearing, long haired hero into the realm of cliche. While John Carter revolutionized the genre, after 100 years, it's hard to look at it as unique. But Andrew Stanton and the special effects team at his disposal did something with John Carter that should have made Star Wars fans quite happy. He embraced the cheese. John Carter is the very definition of a pulpy adventure story. But while the dialogue can sometimes be a bit over the top, it was never grown worthy. Taylor Kitsch and the rest of the cast spout some really ridiculous things through this movie, but managed to do so with a straight face. While being rated PG-13, John Carter is a family-friendly adventure story that has enough grit and edge that it can appeal to older teens and adults, but the broad strokes of typical blockbuster action films that even the youngest viewers can enjoy. John Carter has it all. A dashing hero, a damsel in distress who may not be as helpless as you would think, a slew of different alien species, mysterious antagonists, twists, turns, massive action set pieces, fights, kissing, and even Woola, a giant Martian dog-like creature that should have sold thousands of plush toys. John Carter is a movie that celebrates the best things we like about going to the cinema. It's a spectacle that takes itself just seriously enough while never pretending to be more than it is. You can certainly learn a lot more about the Mars of this film by diving into the books, which means that this movie does its job in pulling you into the fantastic and making you want more. But hey, that's just my unpopular opinion. Tell us yours in the comments below. I'm Alex Mady with JoeBlow.com.